Let me show you how you can use Lightroom's auto settings to set up your base image. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw files from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So here we are in Lightroom with this sunset image and I was struggling a lot. I didn't know what to do with the shadows. I didn't know what to do with the sky. I didn't like the forest on the left side and so on. So I did try quite a few versions and I wasn't happy with a single version I edited. In these cases, it might be helpful to use Lightroom's auto settings. Before we start that, however, we want to merge the HDR image. Down here, you can already see the HDR sequence. So what we want to do, select all the images, then right click, choose photo merge, and then choose HDR. In my videos, I usually just go ahead after the preview has opened up and just hit the merge button. However, in this case, what we want to do is check the auto settings box. You can already see an updated version of the image with restored shadows and the highlights brought down gently. So after that, we can now hit the merge button. So what Lightroom tries to achieve with these auto settings is it wants to create a well-balanced exposure. You can see this clearly when taking a look at the shadows as we now have a lot more details right there in that tree, which was way too black before that. Also, the foreground got a little brighter as well, but we can also just expand the basic panel and take a look at what Lightroom did here. It raised the exposure, dropped the highlights to get details out of the sky, which is especially visible right here around the sun star. It also brought up the shadows, but at the same time it brought down the blacks. So it not only does try to create a balanced exposure, it also tries to raise the contrast. In fact, it actually did raise the contrast slider, as you can see here. It did not change the white balance and the auto adjustments also played around with vibrance and saturation. So I think Lightroom's auto settings did a pretty good job at setting up the base image here. We can still adjust these settings to our liking if there's something we don't like as much. So what I want to do is I want to bring up the saturation to zero and I want to bring down the vibrance a little bit. Also, I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape. This in turn will give us some more base saturation. So I'm quite happy with how these settings are looking so far. What I want to adjust is I want to give this image some more texture and I also want to add a little bit of clarity just to make this image look a bit clearer. Right now, I'm really not happy with the sky. I want to change that and therefore we are going to use a bit of masking. Let's go ahead, open up the masking panel and I'm not going to create a sky mask. Instead, I want to click on range and choose a color range mask. With the color range mask selected, I'm going to click somewhere up here in the darker blue areas. And you can see how we are nicely only targeting the blue areas of this image. So what I want to do with them is to just bring them down. And this will create a much more dramatic sky. Something like this looks pretty good. I want to repeat the step. So let's create another color range mask. Click up here in the sky. This time, however, I'm going to say subtract and I'm using a linear gradient to take away a part from the bottom half of the sky. So only the top part of the sky gets darker. Again, we are going to drop the exposure and by doing this, we are just creating some very nice vignetting effect. We can make this vignetting effect a little stronger by stacking more of these linear gradients on top of each other. I'm going to create another one just for the upper left corner right here. And again, just gently bring down the exposure. We don't want to overdo it, but we want to have a clearly darker sky on top. Okay, I think I'm going to even add one more linear gradient covering everything, even the tree. Just like this, and again, just bring down the exposure. I can also bring down the whites, since there are quite a few highlights in this area. Somewhere around here looks good to me. I think the sky looks much better now. Let's work on the foreground. We can again just use a linear gradient covering all of the foreground like this. And what I want to do is to just bring up the exposure, making it slightly brighter. And I am also going to bring up the clarity. This will give the foreground some more structure. Wonderful. 
Then one more thing I want to add, and that's a radial gradient covering the horizon like this. And I want to bring up the blacks in here. This will add some kind of very subtle glow effect. I'm also going to bring down the dehaze just like this. And I'm bringing up the temperature to make this area warmer. And we could even bring up the saturation here. Perfect. That's it for the masking adjustments. And we can take a look at before we're quick. And you can see this image starts to look a lot better right now. So after the masking adjustments, we can take a look at the color grading. Let's go ahead, open up the color mixer. I just want to work on the saturation here. Bring up orange, yellow, green. And I even want to bring up the blue tones. I want this image to be very, very saturated. So just around here looks good to me. We can also take a look at the split toning in the color grading tab. Here we can enhance the highlights a little more by making the highlights warmer. So set up the hue and bring up the saturation. So I'm not sure if I want to go too crazy here, but I guess this time I'm using a rather low amount of saturation for the highlights. And I also want to go into the midtones. And for the midtones, I'm going to apply a cold color tone to the hue just around here and bring up the saturation a notch. All right. The final part of the color grading is happening in the calibration tab. Here I just want to boost the saturation some more starting with, with red. Let's also adjust the greens and blue. That looks great. I do think I want to even bring down the blue brown or hue a bit, which changes the colors slightly. I just think this especially makes sunset colors look so much better. All right, I think that's it for the color grading. Now we can also do some sharpening in the details tab. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking while holding down the Alt key so you can see where the sharpening is applied and then bring up the amount of sharpening. And that is the image after the Lightroom adjustments. You can see thanks to the auto adjustments, which we have used in the HDR preview, Lightroom has helped quite tremendously for this image. This does not mean you need to use it every time. And this also does not mean if you're using it, it does a perfect job. Just for this image, it really helped and I didn't change much in the tonal adjustments of the basic panel. So what I want to do now is I want to clean up this image and this will be some quite heavy image manipulation because we're getting rid of all the stuff that's overlapping the horizon, even that forest on the right side. This cannot be done in Lightroom, so we want to switch over to Photoshop. So right click on the image, go to Edit In and choose Photoshop. Okay, the first thing we want to do here is to create a duplicate layer by hitting Ctrl J. I'm doing this because I want to have a backup in case I mess something up. Then I'm going to use the spot healing brush and let's zoom in a bit. Actually, no, let's use the remove tool. And I'm now just going to brush over all the things I want to get rid of. And once you have done your selection, click the check icon. This does not look good, but we can try painting over this area one more time using the remove tool and hope Photoshop will fix it. It's a little better, still not perfect. So we can also use the clone stem tool. And I'm going to copy an area from right here and just brush over the weird looking area. Okay, so now that we have fixed the left side, let's work on the right side. This is going to be a little trickier. What my idea is, I'm going to use the selection tool right here. And let's create a selection like this. Hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V. And we now have this part of the left side copied. I'm now going to hit Ctrl T and let's say flip horizontal. In this way, the bright side is towards the center where it's supposed to be and not on the right side of this thing. Now I'm going to find a spot to place this new sky portion somewhere around here. And I want to create a layer mask, then grab the brush by pressing B. Make sure the foreground color is set to black. And now I'm going to just 
get rid of the edges here. Also going to get rid of the bottom edge because you can see the line very clearly down here. Actually, we need to push it further to the edge like this. Okay, still not looking good. So what I want to do next is I want to create a new layer out of everything below it. So I'm going to hit Control, Shift, Alt, E. And we're going to use this layer to add the generative fill. I'm going to press L for the lasso selection. And then I am going to create a very, very rough selection around the forest, just like this. Okay, once we have made the selection, hit Generative Fill up in the bar above and hit Generate. And let's hope Photoshop will do something nice here. Okay, this doesn't look too bad. Now let's get rid of the other part of the forest. Again, I am just going to use the lasso tool to create the selection. I'm going to target a few of the tree branches of the tree in the foreground as well. There's no, there's no way around that. Again, once the selection is done, hit Generate Fill and hit Generate. That looks wonderful. So we now have a much cleaner image. There's just a weird portion down here below, which I want to get rid of again. I want to try using Generative Fill for that. Perfect. Now all that's left to do, again, I want to merge everything, hitting Control Shift Alt E. And then I'm going to use the spot healing brush. Let's zoom in a bit and get rid of a few of those sensor spots. All right, and that's the finished image. So I hope I was able to convince you to give Lightroom's auto adjustments a try if you're stuck editing an image because that can be very, very helpful as you can see. Now for the rest of the editing, this was some quite heavy image manipulation. Still, I think it was worth it since we have a much better looking image now. And at the end of the day, you can do with your images what you want. Let me know if you have any questions about the editing or anything else in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.